We back. Another Wide Out Wednesdays. Myself, Coach Ruben, and Coach Jalen. Yes, sir. So today, obviously, got a got a good slate for y'all. Hope y'all enjoyed last week. Definitely tap in, subscribe, like all that stuff. YouTube, Spotify, Apple, Apple Podcasts. Yep. Um, we're on all that. So also on Instagram. Yeah, Wide Out Wednesdays podcast. So definitely do that. Send it to a friend. Um, definitely, like I said, got a good slate today. So yep. uh, we were just talking about releases and you know when to know when. There's all you know so many tools out there and. And, and things that you can do, but it's like, how do I know when to use this stuff? Um, I think that's important, especially when, you know, there's, there's so much information, you can get bogged down in it. So I guess we'll pop it off with yeah, that. Yeah, for sure. Um, um, I know for me, like, I just, I'm the farthest thing from, like, an Instagram uh, release tape type of dude, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know how it is. And dude, mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of stuff out there, like you were saying. Yeah. So for me, I kind of like to keep it simple. I, I base everything off of speed release. That's, like, at least when I was playing. Yeah. Um, where I started off at, like, I don't, you know, if you can get off the ball going fast, you know, sell vertical, vertical pressure. Um, that's kind of where the basis for me to first start. So I don't know. Yeah. Kind of what you, what you Yeah. I mean, I think that's what it go. It comes down to, like, number one, like, you got to have vertical pressure mm -hmm. um, and horizontal pressure if you're talking about releases because obviously you got press. Um, but yeah, just break that down. Like you said, speed release, like, yeah. what is that? Um, what does that mean to you? Yeah, what does it Because, really it, it, yeah, everybody got different, <laughs> everybody got different ter terminology, you know, I call it this, I call it that, but, yeah, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For me, it's really, I mean, in your stance, you're down in your stance. Um, you know, one of the keys for me for a speed release is kind of shorten up your stance. A lot of times when you get depressed, you know, you'll find these guys, they'll have the, you know, super long, spread apart stances. Yeah. And um, it kind of just, it creates, like, false steps, and it also creates um, time for, you know, longer time for you to get that back foot up to where you need to go and get vertical, so. Um, really, the speed release is kind of just getting your stance, and if you know if the ball's on the left, have your left foot up, and just taking that right foot, you know, mm -hmm. a one by one relationship. So we, I know we always kind of talk about yeah. that, that, getting that one yard vertical and that one yard horizontal. So yeah. attacking the uh, the cushion and the uh, um, leverage. Leverage, yeah. Yep. The DB. So um, so really, kind of just attacking those, and then the other key part of it is getting skinny. I always talk about getting skinny or lowering that shoulder, you know, reducing the surface area that the DB can hit. Um, it's kind of really key there. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of what I really focus on. You know, I do some drills, just really getting low, staying low, and then like the name said, a speed. Like, yeah. Sometimes people try to do speed releases, but want to take yeah, time. won't take their time. Yeah, won't take their time. Yeah. Yeah, defeats the purpose. You know? Yeah. I mean, it's like you're trying to get. Yeah. Down the field on speed release. So. Yeah. So yeah, big and the biggest thing you said, I know you said the the one on one relationship, and we mm -hmm. call it the one on one. I always see, like you said, back to Instagram and Twitter and all these different places. I always see guys when they work releases. It's always like horizontal. It's always yeah. left and right, left and right, left and right, left and right. Which, I'm not saying it doesn't work, but at the same time, you get a good DB like, and he's got good discipline, good technique. Yeah. It's gonna be hard to get off the line because um, the DB's job is to stay square as long as possible. Mm -hmm. And if you're just moving me left and right, I can stay. I can stay square if I'm if I'm if I got the technique and I'm disciplined. All I'm doing is is slide my feet left and right too. Um, and then there, now you're wasting seconds because now you got to go vertical after that. Exactly. So it's like, <laughs> I see that a lot and I see a lot of people work it with just left and right and not really getting up the field or yeah. getting to his cushion, like, like, like you said. Um, so for me, I've always, I've always taught vertical, like get that mm -hmm. vertical pressure. So that one on one style, I'm one yard of, of, of depth and cushion. So I'm attacking this cushion and I'm attacking this leverage. So he has to respect me and move off the spot. You can't just like you got to open up a little bit. Yeah. So then from there I can you know I can create a lane or I can take the the lane he's giving me. Exactly. With speed. Exactly. Because at some point I mean he has the DB has to do something. You know? Yeah. If you're going side to side, he you know he's gonna sit there. A good DB. Yeah, um, a good one. Yeah. I think that's the difference. Like when we talk about a lot of the stuff we talk about, um, you know, if you're just physically better, you're stronger, faster, like. You may not have to have a good release off the line to be the yeah. not a good DB, but like you know, at the end of the day, we're talking about when you get to the higher levels, and mm -hmm. you know, if you're skill wise and speed wise, you're pretty even. Like, yeah, it's the little stuff that's gonna make the difference in your game. Like, yeah, whether you win that rep or lose that rep. Really. Yeah, but, um, and I mean, I even see it with some professional guys. Like, mm -hmm. you watch their releases. I mean, they they go on left and right too. Yeah, and it's like, man, if you would just you see now what people are doing like the. What do you call it? Skip hop and all that. Like yeah. it's the same. Like you, you, you're attacking cushion, and mm -hmm. then at some point you're attacking leverage. Yep. So either way you cut it, like you're doing that. So why not practice that? Exactly. Um, with the base foundation, with speed release, because mm -hmm. um, 
probably six times out of ten, that's what you're gonna do anyway. That, yeah. Honestly. Like the other stuff, like that's a small percentage of of a game. Like you might do that red zone scenario, goal line, you know, first play, second play of the game, when everybody is full energy, and after that, like it's just gonna be. <laughs> jab step, re- jab, speed release, yeah. like it's not gonna be nothing crazy. Unless you like really need it comes down to it, it comes down to it. Something. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean like off the speed release too, like you can kind of dig there's you know certain stuff you can do off that release too. Yeah. So um so it's not like just one release. That's why I always like to start with it. Yeah. You know, if you start with the speed release like you're saying, now you can speed release and then do the one step jab and dip back and rip inside. So, yeah. Um that's kind of like you know going into like the next release that I like to do. It's just yeah. like a one step jab, you know, get them going, get back inside. Yeah. Um, biggest with all releases is you know some people like to say restack, hold your line, mm-hmm. whatever it is, but getting back to that original line that you have so you can save the QB room. Yeah. Um, I think that's ultimately like what really matters there. Um, because if you you know if the DB is able to get you off your mark and you know it, it disrupts the timing, it disrupts yep. the spacing of the you know when the QB is trying to get you the ball. Yeah. Um. All of that. So I think like whatever with like whatever the release you do do, mm-hmm. um, I think keeping that timing and keeping the relationship of where you're supposed to be at when you're supposed to be at, yeah. is, like the the biggest, the biggest yeah, yeah. You know whatever release you decide to yeah. do. Um, and I always tell people like you can either win like there's two points you can either you can either win at the line and mm-hmm. you get him off the line real fast. Then now you have more time at the top of your route. But if you get caught up at the line, then now when you get to the top of your route, you got to know like. I got to go. I, I got to. I don't so, got time. Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes on the speed release, you might keep them on your hip and say, you know, that you're going to double shake them at the top, mm-hmm. but you kind of, you know, you have a plan. And, um, yeah. I think that's the other biggest thing with, uh, we always talk about is like, you know, have a plan. When yep. You line them. Sometimes people get up there and they just space out and then yeah. the DB's in their face and before they know it, they got hands in their chest. Yeah. And, just, and I was going to, I was going to ask you that too. Yeah. So obviously it's, it's a lot of footwork, a lot of just rhythm and timing. Um, but I think a lot of people forget about the hand combat. Oh man, it's a fight. Yeah, it's, it's a real. Yeah. Deal. it's like it's it's hand to hand combat at that point. Yeah. Um, and people, it kills me when like we're we're getting pressed and you get down there and guys have their arms all dangling yeah. down. Yeah. Got like, the got the Odell going. Get the Odell. I was just like, yep. man, like I don't care how good you are, get your hands up. Like I, yeah. you know, I had a college coach always tell me like, if you're in a street fight and I come up to you like, you're not gonna walk up with your hands down. Like, nah. You're gonna have your hands up. You're gonna be ready to go. So. Yep. Um, that's something I, like, I really prided myself on too. Um, my freshman year when I was at NAU, um, I had a coach and he just made us sit there and play. So I'm like, all we would just do, like, we hand fight, D yeah. Line, basically. You know? Yeah. I'm like, you know, I'm young. I'm like, all right, man, like, I'm getting tired of doing yeah. swim, step over, swim here. Like, I'm yeah. tired of it. But then, like, throughout my college career, like, I never really got jammed, honestly. Yeah. Like, my hands were hands like, smooth. Yeah. yeah. And I wasn't fat. You know, I wasn't the fastest guy. Yeah. Um, that, but I knew my strength. Like, yeah. when they shot their hands, I was going to hit them. I wasn't yeah. going to miss. Um, would you would you say that's more important than like the footwork? Like, where, what what would you say? I think it's both. I think you can't. Yeah, you can't do one without the other. Yeah, yeah. I, no, I feel that. I agree. I think that's yeah. another thing too, though, is guys don't train the footwork with the hands. If that yeah. makes any sense. Like for me, when I'm doing something, I'm doing a release. It's in my unison. Hands are already, yeah. It's natural for me now. Just yeah. Right, right step, left hand. Left, hand, left exactly. step, right hand. Yeah. Um, so I think guys a lot of times will see them do releases and their hands are just down, but. You gotta practice the fluidity of yeah. Um, if you get something in the chest, you ain't like you're not gonna be ready for it. Yep. So you know, you've been doing a good drill here recently with like you know having a soccer ball kind of in the hands to, mm-hmm. to get that. that you used to having, you having your hands up. Your hands up and moving. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I think that's really key there too. With yeah. Releases. Yeah, that's one thing I didn't get a lot of when I was coming up. Like it was just when like <laughs> and when no technique and you know, which I've. Mean, Part of it is true. Like, I mean, some of it is just, like, just win. Like, don't make it complicated. Right. Um, obviously, like you said, have a plan. Mm-hmm. Have your techniques that, you, that you've that mastered. Um, but when you get there, like, don't overcomplicate it. Like, mm-hmm. the goal is to win. So, get the, really, the goal is to get off the line, talking about releases, um, because I'm trying to get into my stem and then get to my break and then ultimately get open, get the ball. Yeah. So, don't think, like, man, I'm doing a release because, you know, it's just I'm doing it like you're doing it for a purpose. Exactly. Uh, like you said, right time, right spot. Mm-hmm. Not throwing the timing off. You're not late to where you need to be. So, and that's another thing I see too is like you can't take all day at the release if you're the first read. Yep. I was like, to say that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like it matters when if you're number three and you know you're running a, a delayed slant or something, you might have yeah. time to get out there and, and uh, triple up or something. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. But uh, I think a lot of times guys don't know the playbook well enough. Um, 
you know, we talk about all the time, no, you know, the more you can know the full passing concept and the full plan of things, yeah. it helps you be a better receiver just because, you know, you don't maybe need to know like the exact blocking scheme, but if you know kind of what's going on in there, yeah. um, it definitely you know where the ball's going. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I think the biggest thing too with that is just understanding what your OC, like why is he calling this play in this mm -hmm. moment? Uh, what are we trying to accomplish with this play? So obviously like you go through install, and it's, you know, hey, we're installing this because we want to attack a certain defense here. We want to make sure we get the ball to this person or yep. whatever it may be. Like, we're using some when we see this type of front or when we see this type of defensive shell and understand, like, you get in the game and he calls it, you're like, all right, he's calling it because in film, we went over this, boom, boom. So I need to make sure that I, you know, I'm quick off the line because I'm the first read. Or I need to make sure that I take my time here because I'm not, the, I'm the third read mm -hmm. uh, or I'm the check down, whatever it may be. So then when you're, when you're going through your, releases at the line or you're going through um, your routes, you kind of know where you need to be and when and why. And why, yeah. Yep. Just, yeah, the why behind it. Yep. Um, I think a lot of, yeah, a lot of kids are, some people aren't afraid to ask the questions of why. I mean, I remember that, like, that's what helped me become such a good receiver. Like, and, yeah. and, you know, we're, and, you know, a lot of people do install or whatever it may mm -hmm. be um, to start the week off. Um, and during those install meetings, like, you know, I'd ask, like, hey, coach, like, why are we doing it? Not, like, to, like, you know, I need to know every single answer, but yeah. like, if I had a question about something, like, do I need to be open late? Do I need to be open early? Like, yeah. that sort of deal. And, like, I think that's really what takes your game to the next yeah. level. Um, and not yeah. just being a, oh, hey, you have a, you know, 10 yard dig. Like, yeah. You know, but, okay. What, How do I need to run it? How do I need it? to run it? What yeah. am I trying to get open at? Like, yeah. those sort of questions are, like, yeah. super important. Yeah. So, kind of going into that, the, the, like, the when to know when mm -hmm. is what I call it. So, like, all right, like, how do I know when to use a speed release versus a split release or, um, you know, a triple up, double up, whatever? Um, how do I know when to, you know, take a spray stem or a dive stem or, you know, all this? Like I said, there's all these different different techniques and drills. But how do I, how do I know when to apply them mm -hmm. once I get into a game scenario? Um, so I mean, I guess we, we could give a, a specific example and kind of like diagnose, like, all right, like, how do I know? Yeah when to use use what but like just even thinking about that for you like what do you normally think through or like what did you think through when you were when uh, you were playing i think i mean when it gets to the game I mean, in practice it's a little different or whatever it may be but um like in a game scenario uh, it really like kind of what kind of technique is a is the db playing with like are yeah. they more of a, a soft press type of team yeah. um where i'm gonna have to reset the line of scrimmage and then make a move are they you know hard press jamming that mm -hmm. sort of deal so I think what kind of corner you're playing against and yeah. what his leverage is. It's a technique, gonna, yeah. Yeah, it's going to dictate what I kind of have in my mind yeah. um, to do. Um, and then also what route I'm running, Yeah, it, I think, is a bigger is a big part, too. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, if I have an outbreaking route or, in, you know, if I know that I need to get an inside release, then there's only a certain amount of, you know, releases that you can do to get you back inside. Yeah. So, um, you know, leverage, I think, is another big key. If they're, if they're playing yeah. heavy inside or heavy mm -hmm. outside or whatever it may be, then that's going to kind of, like, determine if I need to use a split release so I can have yeah. a two-way go or if I just need to go ahead and speed release because yeah. he's giving it to me. Uh, I think a lot of times people give just give the release and guys get themselves covered by, you know, doing something and they mm -hmm. do something extra when it's like, they just gave you. You just gave you what you yeah, need. Yeah, they gave you what you want. Go. Like, yeah. Take it. But, um. Yeah, I don't know. What about what about you? Like, what, what do you kind of think about like when you get to the line? Like, what? Yeah. What determines? Yeah. So number one, I need to know where I need to get to, mm -hmm. um, and when. So you know, let's say I'm running, you know, say I run a double post concept, and I'm the outside guy. Like, I know that I'm probably the second read. Mm -hmm. Um, so I need to make sure like I'm not getting jammed up because I mean, second read kind of comes quick. In a, in a play, especially if it's, you know, if you got a good D-line um, and the quarterback is, you know, maybe not the 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 calmest guy back there, like he going to kind of go through his progressions a little bit quicker. So knowing, like, who your quarterback is is another thing. But for me, it's like, where, where, do, I, where do I need to get to and win? Um, and then from there, I'm looking at, all right, what's, like you said, what's his technique? Is he inside leverage? Is he head up? Is he outside? Um, and from there, I'm able to diagnose, all right, like, this is probably man based on film, or this is zone. Yeah. Um, so I know like kind of what what he wants to give up or what he can yeah. give up. Um, so a lot of this is like understanding defense too, I think, and understanding like if he's playing inside leverage, like what is that? Like what is that telling you? Yeah. Why, why is he inside? Why is he inside? So yeah. yeah. 
He don't have help on the inside. Uh-huh. He's using the sideline. Yeah. So I was like, all right, like, if I get inside, if I threaten where he's protecting, I should get a clean release. release yeah. Or I can take it if he's super hard inside and no, no need for me. I can just get off the line and go. Um, or if it's, you know, if he's past five yards, all right, like, probably some sort of zone. Yeah. Um, let me see where the safeties are. So from there, I'm just I'm just diagnosing, like, quick. Like, mm-hmm. it sounds like a lot, but it's quick. Like, it's a line, boom, inside leverage, boom, safety's too high, but one high, boom. All right, but I know I can take an inside release. Yeah. Or, boom, it's man. What is he What is he protecting? Is he heavy outside? All right, like, he can't give up outside release on this for whatever reason. Maybe the, he don't have safety help or he's trying to funnel cover two. Like, his cover, it's a cover two yeah, coverage. Yeah. Um, he's head up. All right, boom, he's just – he head up, he playing man, like – it's just man on man. Yeah, he maybe win. maybe he got help. Maybe he don't. <laughs> and if he's inside, obviously you don't have help on the inside. So it's just diagnosing that, and then from there, hey, what's what is my best release? Yeah. I think a lot of guys forget. Like, there's all this stuff out here, but like, what are you good at? What is, yeah, don't all right. Like, what am I good at? Yeah, like, I am. Like, I'm not good. I, I wasn't good at the the hesitation and all that. Like, uh-huh. I'm speed was my my thing. Yeah. So I I used it. Mm-hmm. Boom. If you don't touch the line, I'm gone. Yeah. Quick jab. Boom. I'm gone. Like, I'm not playing with you. Mm-hmm. Using my hands, dipping the shoulder, all that stuff. So it's like really, yeah, you might use some of that stuff every now and then, depending on who you playing, but it's understanding like what are you like what are you good at? Yeah. Um do you have speed? Do you have good shiftiness? Are you physical? If you're yeah. a physical dude, like you don't need to be doing no shifty moves. Yeah. You need you need to shot release or <laughs> use your power speed release, dip, swat, all that and, yeah. and, and get where you're going. If you're a shifty guy, you don't need to be trying no power releases. Exactly. Um if you're a fast guy, like and not really shifty, you don't need to be trying no Devontae Adams and Keenan Allen type releases. Like, you need to just make a choice and go. Yeah. One or two jab steps max and, like and go. You, people trying to do stuff that they're not. You got to know, like, we were talking about. You got to know who you are. Know who you are. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's huge. Like, knowing who you are. No, I mean, there's the off season is a good time to, you know, work on something. Experiment. Stuff. I, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, towards, like, the end of my college career, I started using, like, the, like, more boxer step kind of slide. Yeah. Um, sort of releases. But I worked on it. So, I probably worked on it, like, two two months or like a month before camp yeah um and i didn't feel comfortable using it during the season so like yeah. i didn't use it all year all yeah. year long i didn't even like try it i mean maybe mm-hmm. during one-on-ones during the yeah. practice or something but that was about it um and then that whole next off season i worked on it like every yeah. month for probably about six months and then i'm like okay i feel confident enough to use it to again. use it um but i think that's like another thing two people just see something once and, and let me once and they're like oh let me try that but like, yeah with, it's not you. It's not you. you yeah. Know? Like, know when the time is to try it, when yeah. to pull out certain different stuff. Um, you know, in the middle of the game on third down is not the time to yeah. try a move you've never, yeah. you've never been practicing yeah. over and over and over again. You might get lucky and you might get, it might work. You might get chewed out on film. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, what are you, like, what are you doing? Exactly. So, yeah, I think that's a, that's a big thing, man. There's it, so many, like, when, when I was playing, it was, especially when I got to college, like, that was when. You know, you got YouTubes and mm-hmm. Instagram and all these different resources out and guys putting stuff out. So it wasn't really like, let me go find this and, and do this, like where it is now, where you yeah. can you can type in whatever and find something. A different release yeah, or whatever. Whatever, whatever it is. Um, but it's figuring out like what what needs to be my focus and what do I like what like what's my game. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's segueing into like what type of wide eye are you is important and yeah. understanding like. Are you a take the top off, you know, speed, like I'm, you know, vertical threat, like that's that's my role, I'm an outside type of guy, or am I chain mover, shifty, yeah. you know, possess and catch type receiver. Mm-hmm. And then from there, like modeling your game around those specific attributes. So like when I'm in the off season, I'm mastering those top qualities of that specific position while still working the, the not so good ones to mm-hmm. ultimately become a complete I can be in the slot, I can be on the outside. But when you're trying to – high school guys, you're trying to get scholarship offers. College guys trying to make it to the NFL. NFL guys trying to be all pro, um, you know, pro ball type type dudes. Yeah. You got to figure out, like, what am I good at that when they know they play me, mm-hmm. hey, bro, he going to get this. Like, <laughs> like he going to – like, we can't stop this, but, like, here's where he where he's not so good at, and let's try to take this stuff away. But we know, like – the fifty fifty ball, like he gonna catch two or three of them jumps, bro. Like it is what it is. Or hey, bro, he gonna shake you a couple times. Like it just it is what it is. He gonna get off the line and he gonna get you know he gonna get his little whatever. Or hey, if he catches the ball, like he gonna get ten yards a yak. Yeah. Like don't let him catch the ball. Yeah. So it's just figuring out what those attributes are for you. So like for me, it was 
all right, bro, if I know I get past you on the line and it's a vertical route, like you're gonna be in trail, you're gonna be in trail mode. Um, and if I get it, like you know what I'm saying, I'm gonna do something with it. So, you know, for you it was probably was what? Like Yeah, I was just good at running routes, like yeah. knowing when to get open, kinda Yeah. I could I could run routes good enough to be outside. I wasn't like the fastest guy, but mm-hmm. I was good enough to run routes outside, but then I was smart enough to be in the slot to yeah. really kinda like you know, get open in those zones, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. So I just knew I knew what my my talents were. My talents were, you know, football IQ and yeah, you know, working hard. Really, you know, yeah. So that, that was my but thing. Like, yeah, a bit of blocking. You know, mm-hmm. I, like, I, I knew what I was good at. Um, That's a slept on one right there. Exactly. Yeah. Say that one again. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. Because yeah. some people, especially like coaches, whether you know it or not, like you got to be able to block on the perimeter to have yeah. the offense to go. So if you can block, like you're probably gonna play. You yeah. Know, a decent amount. I mean, obviously the. Catching the balls while you're at receiver. Yeah, you know, and the biggest but, thing is with that is just mentality. A lot of guys don't want to, but the guys that want to, they might not be good technique wise, but they want to. They want to, and it, and it yeah. shows. You know, yeah. they'll, you don't have to kill anybody at receiver. You're nope, not, you, you just need to get in their way. Yeah, yep. Exactly. So if you if you want to enough, you'll get in somebody's way. Yeah. Really. That's kind of the end all be all yep. there. But um, but yeah, like really knowing who you are, and um, I think a lot of guys in the off season they'll they'll just work the wrong stuff. Like you know, we yeah. talk about all the time, like. That's why it's so important, like identifying like who you are, not just to like what's gonna get you recruited, but just like yeah, how are you gonna fit into your team? Like, yeah. Now? Um, so, because you know when you go when you have recruiting, you're gonna the coaches kind of have like a list. You yep. know, we, we need a tight end that's a blocking tight end this year. All right? Yeah. We need two outside receivers, and we need you know one like jet sweep type of guy. Yeah. So, um, you're not gonna get recruited by every every school because they're not they might not need you exactly. Yeah, yeah, they may be looking for some. You know, they may come to school and may offer somebody else from your school to offer you, but at the end of the day, like they're not looking for you. Mm-hmm. you know? So just knowing what's gonna get you recruited and like the teams that can get you most recruited, you know, yeah. can get you the most recruited. Like don't just specific like you know get too small. Yeah, you're not you know you're not generic enough for everybody. Yeah. But also, you know, identify who you are and mm-hmm. stick to it. And continue yeah. to like improve those things over yeah. and over and over again. And what's and what's crazy is I think at the college level, if you're trying to go professional, it's like the opposite. Yeah, they're looking at ah, like he can't do this, he can't do that. Mm-hmm. So it's like at that point, you've mastered the the thing that got you to the college level. Yeah. Now it's like you got to master the thing that you didn't get recruited. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you didn't get because yeah, because exactly. the, the next level they're looking at all right, like he don't block well or he don't get good yet mm-hmm. or he struggles at getting off the line versus bigger corners yeah. or. You know, he doesn't catch a 50-50 ball or, you know, he he doesn't run the, the cleanest routes, intermediate to short routes. They're, they're uh, picking, they they they're picking it. Yeah, they're tearing it up. So it's kind of weird from high school to, to college. It's, all right, what do I do? The, like, what am I the best mm-hmm. at? And then from college to pro, it's like, what do I need to fix to, all around, yeah. to be more all around? But at the same time, once you get there, I think you look at guy like you look at a – like take Don Devontae Adams when he first got into the league. I mean, he was just a guy that was he went in what he is now, but he was you know like possession catch guy. Sure. Um, he could take the top off, catching fifty fifty ball, and like he learned how to be like the I can get in the slot and dice somebody up. Um, I can run the intermediate routes, Chris, and find open holes in, in zones. Um, they be tossing to him on jet sweeps and stuff. Like yeah, that. like so it's like <laughs> as you evolve, like you start to pick up more and master everything. Um, but it's like you still want to do the things that you do well, mm-hmm. like up here compared to everybody else. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, I think that's huge. Yeah, just focus on your strengths. I mean, you, you obviously want to get your weaknesses better. But, yeah. Uh, at the end of the day, you gotta know what makes you good and, yeah. and get really, really good at them. Um, yeah. Because that's what's gonna be able to separate you. From yeah. Part. For some reason, I keep thinking about Janet Hyatt. Really? When we're talking about this, yeah. Yeah. And, I, yeah. and like I said, I hope, I hope, you know, it seems like he's training. It seems like he works hard. So I, I, yeah. think, I think he'll definitely, you know, be able to improve his game. I think just kind of in, in college, like, he definitely got that that label of just being the, the, the speed. Take the, know, the top off. Take the top off type of yeah. guy. So, um, you know, I think if he keeps working, I think he'll definitely be able to show that he can. He can do it all. Have, have, yeah. You know, do it all. But, I mean, I don't, really, I don't know if it's really blaming him because sometimes, you know, if that's what the – the system has you running, and that's what you're doing. Like I played in wing T, and all we ran was post and go. So like that's what that's all. Like, yeah. Was I could I only run post and go? Calvin so, Johnson. You know what I'm saying? So, Georgia Tech. That's all he ran post so and I, goes. Yeah. So I guess we can't like you know I might be too hard on him like yeah know, being like oh he only does he this, only yeah like, you know but we'll see like you know what I mean yeah like, we'll see kind of I think he'll have a I think he'll go pretty high in the draft and everything yeah and I think you know 
I think will have a good career. But yeah, we'll see if he can evolve and just kind of like DK Metcalf. You know, he yeah. was just uh, he was just a big the big time. You know, yeah. I think I think he's definitely evolved his game. Yeah, you know, over the you know first few years, like years in the league, he's definitely kind of like yeah shown where he can do a little bit more than like, just yeah yeah. But he's still at the end of the day like what is he known for? Like he's known yeah. for like. Catch yeah, exactly. Like you, exactly. You know exactly. Like, yeah, <laughs> exactly. What we saying? Yeah. yeah. Be yeah. be known at the stuff you are good at, but keep working. Yeah, keep your keep, yeah. yeah, keep everything elevated so that way you can become a complete wide out and you get to that point where, all right, like he really don't have no deficiencies. Yeah. Or at least if he does have deficiencies, it's not glaring. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's not like dang, like that's a liability, bro. Mm-hmm. So, but y'all, yeah, no, that's that's good stuff, man. Um, anything else no, on that? No, yeah. Really just. I don't know. Know who you are. Be real with yourself. I'm always. That's like. That's my biggest thing. Like, know yeah. who you are. Be real with yourself. It all goes back down. Like, you gotta take time to like evaluate your game. Mm-hmm. Honestly, evaluate your game. Like, see where you're weak at. See where you need to get good at. Um, and then that's just gonna carry over when we're talking about releases. Like, yeah, it is all encompassing. It all. Game, yep. You know. So, but yeah. Just don't fool yourself. Don't come out here. Yeah. And don't. Don't yeah. think you're something that you're not. Because at the end of the day, I mean, it's good to have like a. A confidence behind you, but it can't be like a false confidence. Because at the end of the day, it's gonna get exposed. Whatever yeah. it comes down to it on Friday nights yeah. or Saturday nights or, or Sunday nights. Yeah, whenever you, whenever you play, you know, it's yeah, gonna get, you can't you can't fake that for so long. Like, yeah, like, the results and the people who really been putting in the work and mm-hmm. they're gonna that's gonna be the ones that's gonna yeah. win and shine. So. Yeah, consistency, commitment, yeah. knowing what to work on, yeah. and and fine tuning it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. and keep being a student of the game. You know, never yeah. think that it's like. I know like, it all. Yeah, like just keep. We always talk. I wish I could have coached myself. Like, yep. You know, what I mean? like, but it's just because we've like we've kept been like students of the game, and yep. we've, our knowledge now is just you know six years, seven years. Yeah. How many ever years after playing? Like, you know, you know, what, five years now for me. Yeah. But it's just like I have so much more knowledge now that I wish I could apply it to myself back then. Yep. But, you know, I guess that's why we're coaching. We can get yeah. That, <laughs> yeah, that's the biggest thing, man. If you can be a student of the game now. Like for the guys that if you got goals to play at the next level, you got goals to play in the NFL, like be a student of the game. Mm-hmm. And really, because the guys that do, like you go talk to them, they know ball. Yep. They know concepts. They know defenses. They know scenarios. And why would you do this versus that? Yep. Um, so it's like don't just come out here and think you're just going to win off of just raw ability. Oh, and I've always been that. Yeah, because you get to the next level, everybody – Everybody all state, everybody was a three star, four star, or yeah. the best at their high school, or the, you know, next, like, in college, NFL, like, everybody was all, all conference and <laughs> whatever. So it's like, you got to find those little things that separate you. Yeah. Um, but my last little tidbit on everything we talked about, too, was just, I mean, it's really three places you can win mm-hmm. um, in a rep it's at the line of scrimmage, in the stem, and then at the top. Yeah. So whether it's the, the catch point or the, the, the break plus the catch point, I should say. Yeah. Um, and or just because if you're in a go ball, it's not really a transition, yeah. but um, or even a post, but yeah, so line of scrimmage in the stem and then at, at the top plus catch point. So it's like figure out out of those three, like what am I the best at? Mm-hmm. Keep working that, get super masterful at that, and then make sure you work the other two yep. and catch them up. Yep. Keep it simple. So that's it. I mean, any like you're saying, yeah. any play is just those three things. You got yeah. the, at the line point, you, yeah. got the, you know, the transition. Mm-hmm. The, Whatever it is, and yep. some people, if you're slow, then you might need to work on getting faster in the transition. That might be simple as that. Yep. And then some, like you said, just catch point or the break yep. point and getting good at that. So. Yeah, and I think another thing on that too that slept on is just like, can you run vanilla routes? Yes. Like, can you run a ten yard dig? Yep. Can you run a twelve back to ten comeback? Fifteen back to twelve comeback? Can you run twelve back to ten curl? Can you run, you know, yeah, a, a five step post and not short step? Mm-hmm. Can you run? A six step corner, four step speed out, and be digging hard, like just basic stuff. Because what did everybody, you know, we do one on ones, everybody gets up to you, they're like, Coach, let me let me run a post corner, yeah. uh, this, that, and the other. Like, yeah. No, man, run a run yeah. a yard curl and see if you can get open. Like, that's yeah. how you can really coach mm-hmm. pretty good. Like, if you can run and have good mechanics and you can yeah. drop them off and come back and catch the yep. ball, like, yeah, that's how you know you're clicking with something. Yep. Because so. then everything else is just cherry yeah, on exactly. top. Yep. Yeah, then you can start adding the, the yep. extras, but. Don't work the extras without working the basics. Yeah, so for sure. That's for sure. But yeah, right yeah, <laughs> nah, for sure. But yeah, nah, that's that's some good stuff. Appreciate y'all tapping in. Definitely follow us, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, if you're not tapped in with us on the training side, definitely do that. Um, you know, wildoutcrew.com or just DM us. We'll shoot you the info. Um, but yeah, nah, definitely stay tapped in. Um, next week, special guest. So definitely 
be in tune for that. And as we keep going, we'll have more more guests. So um, yeah, subscribe, man, because we're gonna keep coming with with the with the good content. So for sure, trying to grow the crew. So yep, for sure.